Hey Roadrunners, welcome back to Lip Medallion. I would love to welcome you to the other Sunday, but the only Sunday I can welcome you to is Defeat Sunday. Now, when you saw me start this year's videos off, I gave you a seven and five scenario. Part of the seven and five scenario was lost to Houston, Tennessee, Tulane, and then two other games in there. Army was one of them. Army was absolutely one of them. Well, there you go. We're one and two right now. Are, are you going to be happy with a one and three out of conference record with who we've played? Knowing what we just came off of? That's a question for you to decide, right? That's a question for you to say, yeah, this is acceptable because we still have conference play left to go, which we do. I'm going to have a video talking about the overall season. I'm going to grade the positions and everything, yada, 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 right? So let's just talk about this game, plain and simple. You should have heard me exclaim as soon as it was announced UTSA has chosen to defer. The absolute worst decision known to man when you are on paper, the bigger, stronger, faster team is to give the other team the ball first that loves to play ball control. Because all they've got is ball control. And they're going to keep that ball away from you. And you're going to have to score behind them, right? You never want to score behind a wishbone-style offense. No. If you're both playing wishbone, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you can then turn around and play ball control back on them and let the best team win, right? And I say wishbone because this is that triple option, multi-option, whatever you want to call it, from their... Their glorified QB, which is a running back, right? Style offense. They took the ball down on us, seven and a half minutes, scored a touchdown. Now you've put your defense out there for seven and a half minutes already of a 60 minute game, right? Now, of course, we fumbled, but. That is a dumb decision. I'm going to go to my grave saying it is dumb, especially knowing that we're going to start Italy Lee Marburger. I think this is probably Coach Trailer's worst decision in his short tenure at UTSA in his four years. I have, no, I don't think I know it is. I've told everybody, no, you want to take the ball first. I got receipts. I said in my last video, don't defer, take the ball first. Okay, no one watches my videos anyway, but that's my saying. I got receipts. That's what I said. That's why I said it, and I was right. I think the game was absolutely lost there it, instantly. Now, let's go to the game within the game. We had terrible offensive stats in the first half. Just absolutely abysmal. Yes, we scored 14 points, but we, had to, we relied on a Hail Mary, right? Which actually, from my vantage point, as soon as that ball started, I started looking back and forth. There's the ball comes. I was like, it's only coming to our guy. All he has to do is catch it and fall in the end zone. And it was an absolute no doubter that he caught it and fell in the end zone from where I was. And for them to take that long to confirm, that's disgusting. But we know what happened later in the game, right? Don't, don't, don't get me started. What we did struggle with was moving the football like consistently. Our, our defense was struggling. But at the same time, at the same time, if your defense is struggling, you're a football team on both sides of the ball. You've got to do something when it's your turn, every time it's your turn, if the offense, defense, or offense is struggling. We didn't. Look at the difference between 2022 
and 2023. We didn't do anything the first time. We I think we missed the field goal, right, on our first drive. But we got down seven, we answered. Got down 14, we answered. And we just kept answering after giving up big plays to Army, right? But we kept answering. We didn't answer. And that's that. That's why we lost. You can gloss over, and I've heard, I've heard people write. I've seen people write. Yeah, well, we scored twenty nine points in fifteen minutes. They only scored whatever in forty five. Well, have you ever thought that's how they run their offense? Their idea is to get three and a half, four yards a play, and that's what they want to get, and that's what they got. Yes. That's, that's how their offense is run. That is old school style football. It's how it works. And if you can't see that, then you haven't watched football very much at all. Plain and simple. Plain and absolutely simple. Now, my issues offensively. Where are our tight ends five to seven yards over the middle? Oscar should not be a major route going over the middle as much as he is deep over the middle. Yeah, I know it works, but he's covered. They know that's coming. They had a guy following him wherever he went. Guess who was wide open three times over the middle? Our wide receivers. We missed two, two passes. And one, li listen to me, that defensive player came over and he grabbed our player's face mask. The officials did not want to call a penalty there, and it was there. He grabbed the face mask and yanked his head sideways. Absolutely did. Didn't call it. Absolutely didn't call it. Now let's talk about a run game. If we were able to run the ball and could run the football, we wouldn't have thrown a 30-yard out route, which should have been pass interference. You all saw it. I heard that someone on ESPN said that was a good call. What? If that was a good call, then why did they call? Did you say the other two calls on us were bad calls? I guarantee you he didn't say it. Look at who was the announcer. Look at his history. And you'll see what was at play in his, his mind, right? Right? I, I don't even want to really go that deep. But our offense should have been able to just create big holes for our running backs all game long. All game long. We should have been able to hand off 25 times and gotten 200 yards rushing. Even in the situation. But we couldn't. Because they were getting hit at the line of scrimmage. They weren't running through big holes. People don't see this. I see it. Because if they were running through big holes, they'd have had a head of steam. They didn't have a head of steam. That, at, no, at no point did they, except for that one long run for 40 yards, that was the only one they had a true head of steam. Every time they were bouncing off players and players were just tackling them at their shoes in traffic. So that tells you there's something wrong with our offensive line and we're struggling there. That's where this game ultimately was also doomed. Take, take out our, our defense, not stopping them really. But our defense did get stops. Did we reward them with touchdowns? Nope, we didn't. Because if, if we had, think about what I'm saying. Because if we had, we'd have scored 40 points. But we didn't. We only scored 29. We only scored 29 points. So what if we scored in 15 minutes? We had four more opportunities to score points, and we didn't. It's kind of how it works. That's my complaint. That, that's, that's where my real complaint is. Now, my second one is, 
our defensive line wasn't getting a push. It was almost like they were told to stop getting at the QB. Just go at him. Squeeze the pocket. Push him back. Push him back. Way back. It was like we were zone defending. And it was allowing Army to create their blocks. It, just get straight up the field. So what if they run by you? So what? That's the linebacker's job is to get that stop. But if you push straight up the field, the quarterback has to hand it off or he's getting pushed back and then the linebacker can chase him in the backfield. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. We should have had six guys on the line of scrimmage. And I mean on the line of scrimmage. Right? That leaves five to defend, to defend three receivers. Because they're going to have five linemen plus running back plus QB. I, 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 I don't know why we didn't do that. But we didn't. It, this, was a, this was, for me, in the trailer era. Now, I'll give you if you want to say UNT. But to me... This was the worst game, worst loss in the trailer era. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was absolutely the worst loss. Up and down the lineup. Up and down the lineup. We shouldn't be escaping Army. And then when we lose to them, we shouldn't be, they shouldn't be kicking our butts. It's that simple. They should be escaping us. Not vice versa. No how, no way, never. We played them too much. We know what that what's at stake here. It's our same defensive coordinator, isn't it? It's our same defensive coordinator. Now, my concern is our wide receivers on the out, out route couldn't get separation. Part of the reason is when you're up 14, you're already stepping back. You're already sitting back. A, an extra three yards. You're playing a nickel and dime package. Nickel or dime style package, right? And that's what they did. That's why we could run the ball in the second half versus the first half. We didn't run the ball in the first half at all. Because if we could run the football, those handoffs, some of them would have gone for a lot more yardage. And it would have slowed down the game. And it had been a 14-14 game with us having the ball. But it wasn't. It was 21-7 with us having the ball in last possession and making it 21-14. The game within the game, you can look at the stats all you want, but it's just like in the NBA. There's those players. They have all these great stats, but then you look around and you go, kind of, what's the team doing? Yeah, you're chunking it up. You're getting... You're getting all these points, right? You're getting, but they're still losing by 10, right? They're still losing by five. See, what made, makes someone like Steph Curry great is he gets stats. But if you look at his stats, they're really, they're really not fantastic, but he can burn you any chance from being able to shoot so great. So he starts softening it up, then guess what? Inside it goes. When you're outside trying to push on them, pick and roll works great. That's the game within the game. This this was this was a this this was a bad loss. This is a this is a program direction defining loss. Th this is I, that that's how I see it. Had had army snuck up on us be a different story, but we've played them. Had we never played them before and never really made the adjustment, that's a different story. But offensively, we look terrible at times. We look terrible at times. Part of it is, you know, you can only run throw those out routes and they were starting to defend them. So they stopped respecting it. They really did. Now they had the one where Eddie Lee got that really nice little sidearm 
that went for a touchdown. But part of that was because they blitzed on it, right? Had they not blitzed on it and stayed over there, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go for a touchdown. But they brought the guy, they brought the guy in and Ada Lee got it off. Burned them on a blitz. But if they don't, it, it's the, the score is even worse. It is what it is. I will be in every game. At the end of the day, at the end of the season, I have been in, I have stayed the entirety of all but three games. In our 13-year history, all but three games in the Alamo Dome, I've been in them. I have not sat anywhere else. I've not been at a UT game. I've not been in an Alabama game. I've not been at a you-name-it game. I've been where my roadrunners are when they're playing from home, playing at home. But if they're on the road, no, because I'm not going to travel, right? It costs money. And frankly, why do I want to give those programs money when they don't give us money? Do you really think they, they, do you think, who do you think reciprocates better than we, we give? At best case, it's Texas State. It isn't Houston. Remember, I live in Houston. I've been to our Houston games. Houston doesn't outdo us. No, it's probably even, and it's fine, but they don't out necessarily outdo us. Not by a large margin, not by a large margin. I'm talking, when we go to Texas State, there's a lot of us, there's a lot of us there. And that's probably even, but we go to North Texas, there's far more of us there than there are them coming here. Far more. Far more. Rice? Oh, that's a joke. Don't even waste your time. La Tech? Yes, I've been at La Tech. More of us there than they are here. Southern Miss? I wouldn't know. I haven't been to Southern Miss, but people have told me that Southern Miss is one of those ones that it's kind of hard to get to, kind of in Hattiesburg, and uh, I don't know. I just ha I just haven't been, to, been on the road to see Southern Miss, and, well, we don't play them anymore right? FAU, any of the Florida schools? I haven't seen anyone that I would say traveled from FAU to us. They might live in the area or traveled from Miami, FIU to come to us. But I know people that have gone that way. Absolutely. Quite a few actually that have said, I'm making the trip. And Army, we had a lot of people go last year. A lot, right? What do they put in our seats? So why? So I don't want to waste my money in their, their their stadium. That's their problem. Now let's talk about the future. We got Tennessee coming up. Oof, that's tough. But at the end of the day, we get to see who this program is by how we play against Tennessee and how we play against all our opponents going forward. Peace out, Roadrunners. I'm going to say it. This was a career. This was a program defining loss. One way or the other. We're either going to step up and go, this ain't going to happen again. Or we're just going to fall into the doldrums and be a Midland football team. At best. It's the only way. It's the only two outcomes. Peace out.